of darkness. The sin of Cain has spawned the cursed horror that stalks the night in search of living blood. The kindred have long been a secret influence through all ages of human history, plotting against each other in a never-ending jihad. Their immortal progeny are among us to this day, hidden from the eyes of humanity by an elaborate masquerade. Christoph Rumble. I am a man of God and a soldier in heaven's cause. grievous wound and must rest. I must return to my... Oh. Lord, peace, I beg thee. Thy brave captain left a letter before thy sword brethren continued on their crusade. I thank thee for this news, my lady, and for thy care. Surely thou hast drawn me back from the jaws of death itself. Twas the Lord that saw fit to spare thy life. We humble sisters simply attended thee. Oh, Sister Ineska is too modest. She ministered to thy shattered body day and night, long after all others had given up hope. She did indeed restore thy life. I am Archbishop Giza. Thou hast done great service for Christendom, young sir. Tonight I shall make prayers of thanksgiving that thou live, and may send more sinners to hell. I offer thee all my gratitude for thy service. I am in thy debt. The rosy life in thy cheek is payment enough. Scream! I must walk past these scrappable bugs. Ugh. Slay the beast. Yeah, you found out the game has middle high English, which is absolutely epic. Christoph, my wound! Nay, it is nothing. A scratch. And he's down. Spot a flesh wound. The mighty walls of Prague once held all demons at bay, but the Schlachter have overtaken a silver mine to the east, with a haven so close to the city they boldly walk the streets by night to kill, and worse than kill. Many have been dragged alive from their homes for some unspeakable purpose. I will never let them take thee. Oh, sir. Okay, are we the brave big guy, or are we the wounded weakling? Tomorrow. I shall venture into the silver mine and flush the vermin from their holes. Thou must not. Thy wound is too great. Nay, I am resolved. They will pay in blood for the fright they have given thee. Oh, sir, should they harm thee, my heart... Come away, Aneska. 
Thou hast wasted enough of good Sir Christoph's time with thy idle chatter. Christoph, the Lord smiles upon thy wrath. I shall pray for thy victory. I shall not fail. My good kinsman Christoph, thy bravery carried the day in the battle of the Moravian Hills. Thy sword brethren crushed the pagan barbarians and now chased their scattered hordes into eastern Hungary. Once the last of the heathens are routed, our garrison shall return to Prague and thou mayst rejoin our ranks. Until then, the tender ministrations of the Holy Sisters shall revive thee if it be God's will that thou outlive thy wound. Thy fellow sword brethren pray for thy swift recovery, for they cannot allow thee to ripe and rot in decadent luxury whilst they sacrifice themselves. Perhaps thou canst make thy sword arm useful to good Archbishop Giza until such time as we return to collect thee. May the tidings of the Lord be upon thee, Sir Cuthbert. Oh, sir. I pray for thy safety on so perilous a journey. The cheerful daylight world belies the horrors that prowl by night. How can the good people of Prague go about their business with such evil abroad in the land? Hail and well met, Crusader. Hail and well met to thee, Knights of St. John. Tis good to hear the voice of a fellow Frenchman. We Knights of St. John are far from home, and I would we were back in France. Say not so. We should gladly go to the ends of the earth in service to our Lord. Good day to thee. Talk to Hail, good sir knight, and welcome. They do say you seek to cleanse the minds of evil. Oh, these demons have brought great suffering to the good people of Prague. Our craftsmen have no silver for their wares, and many proud families now beg for their bread. Please, accept all that my humble end can provide, and the blessings of the Lord. Be upon your quest. Ah, a smithy. Now I may replace my war weary armor. Smithy. Hail, good sir blacksmith. I am Christoph of the Sword Brethren, and I seek to replace armor lost in battle. Ho there, young crusader. I be Jiri Borajo, and the very boards of me humble shop are honored to be trodden by a sword, brethren. And who will ye be slaying in your new armor? I seek to slay the demons in the silver mines to the east. You look a bit sickly, Sir Christoph. If ye do seek to spill the blood of the fiends in the mine, ye'll be needing special protection. The protection of the Lord suffices. I need no more than that. Ha! Tell that to your armor and sword. Nay, tis gypsy charms I be speaking of. Aid, Aid from a gypsy? Can such a thing be godly? Why, did not King Saul seek out a wise woman and her familiar spirit in his time of need? Yea, that very King Saul, who had once banished all witches, sought a witch when he needed to learn of his future. She summoned the spirit of Samuel the prophet, and no mistake, tis in the Holy Bible. There is hmm. wisdom in thy words. I will go to this gypsy. You must promise me that the gypsy will come to no harm by my telling. Sure. I promise. Go ye to the Golden Lane, where you'll find an herbal shop run by the old gypsy woman, Unorna. There ye shall find something to aid ye surely. God be with ye, young one. The shop of a gypsy witch. Dare I enter such a place? Hello, young one. What is it you desire? I desire only to bring the Lord's justice to the evil that has befallen this city. I would know of the devils that rule the night in Prague. They are vampires, the undead, the blood drinkers. The fiends do hide their miserable carcasses away in mines and crypts under the earth, for the very rays of the sun to scald the flesh from their bones. It is quite a sight 
and a stench, the like of which you'll ne'er forget. Then perhaps I shall show them the glory of the breaking dawn before dealing them their final mercy. Weapons cannot kill the fiends, lest their heads be cleft from their undying bodies. You will need more than a buckler of faith to aid you. Go with God, young one. And be sure to be within the warmth of a hearth when the sun falls. For the foes you have seen are but a small part of the wickedness that walks the streets of Prague by night. I shall send all such wickedness back to hell. Take care outside the gates of the city, good Sir Knight. For all those that wander the highways alone after nightfall are seldom heard from again. Even the strongest of warriors have disappeared. The streets of Prague are no longer safe after dark, but beyond the city walls all hell walks the night. Hell that disgorges from yonder castle of Viserod. <coughs> Beware the mines, Crusader. If mere men could kill the Hellspawn, we knights of St. John would have slain them long ago. We lock these gates as the last rays of the sun die in the mountains. Pass within before dark, or wait without until dawn. I pray for thy safe return. Blasphemy! Let the builders of this mockery of a holy cathedral Show their wicked faces. Out, blaspheming wretch! Taste the steel of righteousness! I am Aldra, the unliving, and I bid thee welcome to my domain. Although I have found thee an inhospitable and ungrateful You. God strike thee down, she-devil! Accursed creature! Earth has no room for such as thee! Verily, all the earth is all dominion. With every passing day our number swell. We shatter all defenses and corrupt all homes. But to me, she shall rule all the world. And everyone, mortal and canine alike, will tremble at all coming. Hellspawn, the purity of the holy places protects them from thy evil. Purity can be sighed. And holiness can be defiled. The merciless of our visible shall awaken soon. He shall defile all that is pure and leave corruption in his wake. In defilement lies his strength. Purity is sweet meat to him, as thy rich blood is sweet wine to me. Die, thou damned beast. God hath spat thee out of heaven in ancient times, and now I scourge thee from the earth. Die, and burn far from the sight of God. Yes. Foul misery. I offer thee no last rites. The sweet redemption of our Lord is forbidden to the likes of thee. Thou hast no home now but the eternal torments of hell. An amulet of St. Jude. Tis an omen. If I redeem so holy a relic from this ungodly tomb, surely the saint shall grant me his favor. Who comes there? Ah, the crusader ends his day in retreat. Back for another rest in the nunnery? All of Prague may rest. I have claimed the head of the demon queen. Praise be to Christoph, champion of Prague. The bells of Prague do ring out your victory, Christoph. The whole city prizes your handiwork. And I prize thine. In Behold, tis the Crusader, the demon slayer who purifies the minds. Raise your cups in his honor. To Crystal. I am newly returned from the silver mines. The evil therein is no more. The splendor of the Lord rains down upon thee, Christoph. I give thee this wrought silver cross for thy labors. I would hear all thou knowest of vampire lords, that I might fight them more wisely. They are evil. That is all thou need knowest. I do not corrupt my soul with knowledge beyond that. I thank thee. Hurrah! Hurrah for Kristoff! The mines are safe again. 
I'll hail the crusading hero of Prague. Hurrah! We thank thee for restoring the mines. We finally have new silver to craft and sell. God bless thee, Sir Kristoff. My heart warms to see the good people rejoice so, and yet Osra's words chill me to the core. I fear that evil endures in Prague. Good morrow, my lady. Good morrow, my lord. We give thanks that the mines are restored to godly condition. And we rejoice to see thee in health after such danger. Yet there is danger in health, for I must forego thy tender ministrations. My lord! Yet now I suffer a new affliction, for which thou hast the only cure. I shall serve thee in any way I can, my lord. I desire... I have retrieved a sacred relic, my lady, the amulet of St. Jude. I would give it thee, my lady, for thy devoted care. I take no gifts. The Lord's work is favor enough. It is the dearest of all I have. And thou art the dearest of all I have not. Please, keep this for my sake. Heal when I rest. <clears throat> uh, good day, Archbishop Giza. Explain thy intentions toward good sister Ineska. I command thee to speak only truth before God. I find her the fairest of all God's creatures and bemoan the cruel fate that hath placed her beyond my reach. In another time and place, we might have found happiness together as man and wife. Such thoughts are evil. Thy concupiscence damns thy soul and dooms Aneska. I command thee, purge such lusts from my heart. If not for thy sake, then for hers. Do not tempt her away from her holy orders, thou wicked, selfish boy. She is out of thy star and is not for the likes of thee. Her place is with me, with us, here in the convent. And thy place is out in the wilderness, striking the fear of God into the hearts of the heathen. If thou art strong enough to entertain such lusts, thou art strong enough to return to thy regiment. Alas, they are too far away. Hmm. Well, the streets of Prague are still host to unclean demons. Perhaps thou shouldst destroy these abominations to expend some of thy hot blood. I must protest. My place is here. The demon queen confessed they sought to defile holy places. Tis my duty to protect these hallowed grounds when next they attack. Thy archbishop shall dictate thy duty. Hunt them in the streets. I obey, but I'm a rebel. I obey, but I shall protect the streets in front of the cathedral and convent as well. Hmm. I shall be watching thee, thou immoral lad. Cock blocked. and sing your praises for the slaying of Azra, the unliving. Without thy lore, I could not have slain her, so I thank thee for thy wise counsel. But Azra said many things that did shake my soul. I would have benefit of thy lore. Ask thy questions. Hmm, let's get some background going on. What means she by Canite? So every mother's child knows of vampires. Very few know they are descended from Cain and raised by the first woman created by God. Do not blaspheme so about Adam and Eve. Ha! Not Adam and Eve. Adam and Lilith. Lilith was Adam's first wife and a spirited woman was she. <laughs> now, Adam wanted Lilith to serve under him, and Lilith spurned such bumpkin courtship, ha! leaving him for the company of angels and devils. So, God did fashion Eve, 
who was meek and mild. But their children were far from gentle. When Cain slew his brother Abel, God cursed Cain, saying that the food that grew of the earth would no longer sustain him. Only blood, like the blood he spilled from Abe, would slake his thirst. Lilith found the outcast Cain and taught him to harness the powers of heaven and hell. God made Cain the first vampire, and Cain made all the rest by preying on the descendants of Seth, Adam's third son. And so, all vampires are called Cainites, but only by those who know more than the church tells. I cannot pay heed to such strange notions. You will heed me, if you would hurt them. Mm, let's go know thou one. of the Zemitsi? Of the thirteen great vampire clans, the fiends of Clan Zemitsi be the most vicious. They come from the dark Carpathian mountains, where ancient evil slumbers. They seek to rule mortals as cattle, and abduct us from the streets at night. They cruelly craft the flesh to fashion monsters, which they call Shlakta. To extend their rule into daylight, they do corrupt mortals with wealth and power and their own demonic blood. When the mortal servants do drink the blood of their masters, they become ghouls that live forever. So long as they drink each day their daily blood. In the oldest ghoul lineages, like the royal premiser family, children are born as revenants, mortals born with vampiric blood coursing in their veins. Know thou of the Methuselah Visserad? Methuselahs are among the most ancient and powerful of all vampires. Alas, I know nothing of the Methuselah of Visserad, save that Visserad Castle is the foul heart of the evil Tsimitsi vampire clan. But don't you be going there, young one. Even an army of thy sword brethren could not dislodge such evil. You sure about that? What lore hast thou of these demons? The vampires do prey on mortals, but they do save their real hatred for other vampires. The thirteen great vampire clans are forever at war. Clan against clan, elder against children, in a fearsome jihad. They do shake the world to its foundations with their hate, and twist up the destiny of mortals into their dark tapestry. I thank thee. Go with God, young one, and be sure to be within the warmth of a hearth when the sun falls. For the foes you have seen are but a small part of the wickedness that walks the streets of Prague by night. I shall send all such wickedness back to hell. Oh, tis the little warrior. I bet you're soft and tender inside your tin breeches. I'll eat your gizzard while it's still attached to your quivering body. This is thy payment for bringing final death to Azra the Unliving. Christoph, thou hast brought evil into this holy place. This taint follows thy soiled soul. It burns. The she cow's vile purity burns like unto the sun. Back to the abyss, hell spawn. Thou art anathema in the eyes of God. Die! and be damned! Away with thee! We forbid thee to defile this holy place! It appears that I am once again in thy debt, brave sir. 
for coming to us in our time of need. As I am in thy debt for saving my life with thy tender care, and for thy uncommon valor in standing with me against the forces of hell. I pray, my lord, that thou art always near to deliver us from this evil. Milady, I pledge my arm to thy cause for as long as I draw breath and beyond. Then I have faith in the safety of our humble convent. His skill is great, and he fights with the strength of a demon. His huh? courage has opened the minds again. Think how the gift of Cain would enhance the might of such a man. Aye. He has done great service to the Promethean cause by dispatching Azra without our involvement. But this decision must be made with surpassing care. With so many of us missing, we need his sword in the coming tumult. The other clans are surely considering him for the embrace by now. No doubt. But hast thou forgotten the power the Church wields over the minds of these mortals, Cosmos? His faith is the strength behind his steel. Stripped of his faith, would he be of any use to us, I wonder? He has been cut from the herd by his wound. He's been separated from the heart of his sword brethren by many miles. Like any stray, he is more malleable. He may bend rather than break. Thou art wise, Cosmas. How well thou knowest the hearts of men of war. Yet, I am not convinced. The Premisils are enraged at his continuing interference in their plans. I have learned that they have now placed a rich bounty upon his head. He'll not outlive the next moon. Get thee to the Prince, and tell him that this night, Ekaterina the Wise awakens another into darkness. Thy will is done. And Cosmos, should this Kristoff falter or fail, he must fall. Um, shit. Lady Ineska, I must speak with thee. Hush, lest thou rouse the convent with thy clamor. I have wandered the city for hours, yet each turn of the streets did lead me back here. My lord, tis dusk. Thou shouldst not be out of doors. Fiends shall soon be legion. I would fight all fiends of hell to stand at thy door. And, and how may our holy order assist his lordship this eve? Milady, thou must hear me. I sought to tell thee once before, but fear took my voice. What power could daunt the man who hath faced demons from hell? The face of an angel from heaven. Oh, my lord, I... Thou hast stuck me a wound that heals not. My life's blood pours out before me, and I cannot stench it. I do love thee, fair Ineska. I do love thee with a passion I have never known. My lord, I must protest. Such love is an affront to heaven. If thou deny me, I am undone. I... I cannot deny thee. I, too, am afflicted with a wound for which thou art the only cure. Ah. Uh. My soul fell when first I beheld thee, and now my heart is cleft in twain. My love of God and my love of thee have torn me to ribbons, for I must betray one to keep faith with the other. Thus my sins do pour out before me, for I have spilt my wickedness upon thy innocent bosom. Nay, tis my wanton desire that hath ensnared thy virtuous heart. I was a fool to confess my heart to thee. Gladly would I imperil mine own soul, but never thine. Then truly we are lost. Our souls are beyond all hope of redemption. My lord, look thou at the locket thou didst give me. Tis the locket of St. Jude, the patron saint of lost causes. Thus fate makes a bitter mockery of our plight. Say not so. Where the saints tread, Hope follows. The absent Jude shall bring us hope past all hope. I pray we find a way. I pray so too. Thy hopeful words have filled my heart with courage, and I can leave satisfied. Farewell, fair Aniska. Nay, the streets are not safe at night. Thou must stay here in the convent till the sun shines again. May God have mercy upon my soul. 
for the devil has just placed into my heart the most impure of notions. I do tremble to confess it, but I feel I would cast away all holiness to stay. I would exchange an eternity of heaven's bliss for one night by thy side. Uh, oh, oh. Know thee that thou art not alone in such desires. Then truly, I am damned. I am condemned for my lust. But I must not drag thee into the abyss with me. I must flee this holy place and return no more. My lord, come back! Thou struggles nobly. I love such passion. A lesser man could not even speak in my grasp. What art thou? A demon sent from hell? I am here to save thee, Kristoff. To deliver thee from thy mortal shackles. By the power of the Lord Eternal, I banish thee from my presence. Poor child. Thy faith died long ago. Amidst a dread battle, thou came to know thy true nature. Thou art a killer of men no matter how thou dost try to justify thy deeds. Thou kills not when compelled by God, but when ordered by men. Now come to me. I am the mother of thy rebirth. I know thy ways, demon, and I have lore enough to kill thee. Nay, thou art helpless in my hands as a naked babe. Nay! I starve. I am Ekaterina the Wise, Ekaterina the Promethean, Ekaterina the leader of the Bruja clan. We are the children of Cain, and now thou art one of us. God have mercy on my soul. I am damned. Steady now, whelp. Thou lackst the strength to fight, and I would slice thee in twain without hesitation. Thou must feed, my child, before the hunger overtakes thee and drives thee mad. <gasps> Am I now a miserable demon, stealing blood to live? Damned and cursed to hell! Is this all that remains of noble Kristoff? Nay, my child. There is far more to thee than ever before. Thou art Bruja now. We Bruja are the philosophers of Cain's lineage. Where other clans treasured gold and trinkets, we sought pure wisdom. We strove to unravel the thorny knots that bind the very gates of heaven. Are we damned? Nay, we are exalted. In fabled Carthage, we lived in concordance with all mortals. Together we sought the secrets of Eden, that the children of Cain and the children of Seth would be raised up. But the hated Ventru grew jealous of our power. The patrician clan betrayed us and tried to destroy us. We survived, but fabled Carthage did not. Despite this great loss, we Prometheans continue our search for harmony with all mortals. We are the most noble of our breed, Kristoff. 
We seek only the fulfillment of the dream that was Carthage. But we need thy help to achieve this goal. A war lies ahead. A terrible battle that calls for warriors like us. Wars among devils do not concern me. We will cause thee to think otherwise, whelp. Enough, Cosmos. The Bruja blood needs time to cool. Come, let us leave our young one to think upon his situation. But know this, Kristoff. Thou would have been killed or embraced by our enemies on this night. We have given thee life eternal, and awakened thee to the true face of thy world. I do not expect gratitude, but our clan requires loyalty or death. There is no life in me. Even my heart has ceased to beat. My very soul has been stripped from me. There is nothing left for salvation or damnation. Thou needs must pledge fealty to thy new mistress. I am newly remade and know little of this world. I agree only to follow thy lead for the present. Such rebelliousness is unseemly in Abruja. I do not like such willfulness in my children. He displays as much fealty as can be expected from such a one, Katarina. Very well, Cosmas. Then thou may hold his leash. We shall see if he takes instruction with more deference. Kristoff, thou must understand that our enemies are legion and none more vile than Clan Zamitsi, which infests Prague like a plague. The fiends seek thy death in payment for the slaying of Azra and her Shlokta servitors. If thou art to survive, thou must quickly master the powers of thy blood. Thou must pay heed to all our laws, or thou wilt become a gibbering monster like the Zamitsi. Our first law. Mistress Ekaterina, I crave thy indulgence. Kristoff is a man of action. His learning shall be the greater on the field of battle than the parlors of the Prometheans. Let me take him on my mission to Garanal's Haven, where he may learn our ways firsthand. I could use a stout broadsword protecting my back. Kristoff is not yet ready. Verily, he is as ready as he shall ever be. I would have thy counsel, Cosmos. Kristoff is no Bruja philosopher. His hot blood cools too much when he has no mission and curdles. Send him forth. If he survives, he will have mastered our ways. Very well. Kristoff, go thou with Wilhelm Stryker. Trust what he says if thou wouldst outlive the night. Go, my swordsman, and strike deep into the lair of our dear ally, Garanal the Cappadocian. Time to cut thy teeth, fledgling. Ekaterina is a scholar, not a warrior born. She would keep a fledgling studying vampire lore in her nest till Gehenna comes, and never hurl them from the nest to test their wings. But I cannot spend hours debating canite wisdom in a university. Give me a stout broadsword in my hand, and the sweet taste of my foe's blood on my tongue, and I have all the wisdom I need. And I suspect thou art akin to me. I am not akin to thee, Blood Guzzler. I strike only those that deserve my steel. I do not murder the innocents to gorge on their blood. Thou shalt feed upon blood, or thou shalt die. But thou need not kill to do so. Drink only so much blood as will sustain thee. Suffer thy prey to live on, for to kill during the feeding is to violate our Promethean ethic. And that way lies the beast. The beast? A beast born of Cain's sin doth coil within thy breast, Christoph. Keep it at bay, or be lost forever. Acts of cruelty unleash that beast, until it rules thee, as it rules many of Azra's kin. The beast made them madmen? Nay, the mad vampires are called Malkavian. Shouldst thou meet one, God help thee. Shouldst thou need his assistance, God cannot help thee. Nay, the beast is not mere madness, but demonic possession by the curse of Cain. We Prometheans are wayfarers in the land of the beast, but we stray not from the road of humanity, the Via Humanitas. By our acts of compassion are we saved from the jaws of the beast. Remember this always, or be devoured from within. Thou hast life everlasting. 
so long as thou keepest my pallid flesh hidden from the sun's hateful rays. The life-giving sun only brings death to the likes of us. Each day we must retreat to our haven in the chambers below the university. I grow faint. The hunger overcomes thee. The beast strengthens as thou weaken from lack of blood. Canst thou feel him uncoiling in thy heart? Thou must feed. Feed or die, Christoph, for I shall kill thee before I let the beast claim thee. Oh. Um. Only what thou needs, Christoph, no more. Behold, his wound vanishes. Monsieur shouldn't drink so much wine, eh, Christoph? Do not worry, he'll wake up and know nothing of what has happened. Most mortals find great pleasure in the dark kiss. Ekaterina tells us that in Carthage the mortals happily submitted to it. These powers tempt me to dark acts. How easily could I rain devastation on all who vex me. Thy fear and thy power conspire to make of thee a beast. Seek thee an anchor for thy humanity, a rock to cling to when storms come. Anezka. Love for a mortal is the most dangerous of all anchors. I must see Anezka. That is most unwise. The cheerful world of daylight is lost to thee. I must see her again, just to look upon her for a moment. Ekaterina would not be pleased. Oh, very well. Shouldst thou display valor on our mission this night, I shall take thee to the convent. But only for a moment to glimpse her as she sleeps. Now come, our mission lies ahead. Hello, young one. What is it you... But hold. You do look so strangely. Oh, they have hurt you. The canines have taken ye for their own. Oh, my poor boy. But fear not. Unorna neither feels ye nor casts ye out. I'll help ye, if I can. Behold Petron Hill Monastery, haven of the Cappadocian vampires in Prague. The monks are vampires? Nay. The Cappadocians lurk in the desecrated crypts below the monastery, out of sight of the monks who provide them with fresh blood. Only those monks that serve Garanol know the real master of the monastery. What is our mission? A mission of misfortune. Wise and noble Garanol is friend and ally to Ekaterina. I take no pleasure in storming his home, but Ekaterina has divined that the Cappadocians have stolen from her. We seek to retrieve a precious fragment of the Book of Nod, the wisdom of the ancient Canaanites. Why would Garanol steal from her? We know not. Until we learn all, we cannot let them know we serve Ekaterina. The Cappadocians are a strange clan, Christoph. They seek to understand death and the secrets of the grave. Prepare thyself. Their halls are guarded by the walking dead. A stench of death taints this holy place. Tis fitting for the clan of death. Behold, the mural depicts Cain as God's favored son. Every child knows that Cain's sacrifice of grain vexed the Lord, and Abel's sacrifice of the blood of a lamb satisfied the Lord. But mysterious old Cainites tell us that the Lord craved blood and reveled in Cain's second sacrifice, the blood of his brother Abel. The Lord raised up Cain over the other sons of Adam. He freed him from plowing the earth for food and set a mark on him that he live forever. Garanol devoutly believes this Cainite heresy, which holds that the curse of Cain is truly a blessing. And thou, dost thou believe the Cainite heresy? If I am favored of the Lord, the angels have not seen fit to tell me of it. Thou dost fight thy allies with great zeal, Wilhelm. I take no pleasure in it. I just do what must be done. The only one I will not fight is Garanol, the leader of the Cappadocians. I chose to strike this night because Garanol and his assistant Serena have an audience with the Canite Prince of Prague, Rulof Brandel, and will not be here. More dark worship. Is there no end to the vampiric taste for blasphemy? Garanol celebrates the transfiguration of death, but I do not share his fondness for the grave. 
I have died once to become a Cainite and do not seek to die again. An earthen floor blankets this room. Aye, the Cappadocians do bury their newly embraced in a ritual of death. Store. It is Garanol's study. Now to find the key that unlocks the secrets of the dead. A key. A key in the form of a finger bone. My newest child, Mercurio, hath proved a tainted blessing. Though he is ambitious and untrustworthy, he has added much to the protection of this house. He drinks the power of death with an unquenchable thirst, and could become the greatest student of the grave. But he hath little respect for our ancient alliances with the other Canites, and could reawaken old feuds. The ungrateful puppy even seeks to seal his crypt from me. Does he not know that I can crack his sealed crypt at any time with my anointed skull of the Lamia? Alas, but I do require Mercurio's aid until such time as I can fathom the secrets of the Golem and gain its protection. I would that I had the lore of Rabbi Mordecai ben Judah to aid my experiments, but as I lack the wisdom of the Kabbalists, I would deal with the devil himself in these parlous times. Hmm. If Mercurio is charged with the protection of this haven, I wonder that we have not yet faced him. I would have words with this Mercurio. Venerable Garanel should not have to rely upon an untrustworthy child. What beast once wore this skull upon its neck? What? How comes out here? Flee now, and the great Mercurio will not smite thee. So, hiding like a rat in a hole, whilst thy kin fight valiantly in defense of thy theft, thou art a clot pole of a coward. I hide not. My work is too important. Work thou hast interrupted. I shall crack open the tree of life and uncover all the secrets of death and life. Hmm. I shall tell thee the secret of death and life. Give us the Nod Fragment and we shall let thee live. Nay, thou wilt tell Garanol of my theft. Tis better I bury thee in a secret grave, with stakes of oak piercing thy hearts, and a wraithworm shall hollow out thy noble brows and robust cheeks. Signs of Gehenna, Canto Four. So too, our grandsires will rise from the ground. They will break their fast on the first part of us. They will consume us whole. What means this dire portent? This is a great secret known to a few wise vampires. The Book of Nod tells us that the 13 ancient founders of the vampire clans will one day rise from their age-old sleep. When these antediluvians emerge from torpor, they shall fall upon us, their descendants, and gorge their unholy thirst upon our blood. The day they rise is called Gehenna, or the Winnowing, and it signals the end of all that is. We know not how to prevent it, but even now Ekaterina searches for a way. Why didst thou not tell me of this? With such evil barking at our heels, we must hasten our work. Forgive us. Most young Canaanites are not ready to hear it. They mistrust their sire, and that we cannot have. The reeky, bat-fouling old Potok fears that I seek to betray him. But he shall not know with a certainty until the last of his sludge blood oozes from his pus corpse. The old maggot pie needeth my power in defense of his withered haven, and shall overlook my indiscretion. So I must keep his mewling household in a frenzy, defending themselves from aggrieved villains. I shall steal from the beslubbering Bruja to draw their wrath upon him. However, should his crusty majesty plumb the secrets of the Golem, he shall need me no longer. So I shall pollute the rabbi's gall faced Golem with grave rot, making it useless to him. Then shall I drink the old leper's blood before the moon hath fully waned. Garanol's search for wisdom has not trespassed into our haven. Twas his false servant, Mercurio. We were fortunate to find the fragment before another clan could learn of it. Others might not have spared Garanol in the search. 
We must hurry. Dawn approaches. The sun is a destroyer now, Kristoff. Remember this. During the day, thou must find a place to rest where no sunlight can enter. Let us return to the university where Katarina shall surely celebrate our triumph. I cannot share thy pleasure over such a deed. Come now. Before thy embrace, did thou not slay evil creatures? Behold! Thy mission survives even thy death. That is scant solace for the loss of my soul. Thou dost brood too much upon events thou cannot change, Kristoff. Seek consolation in our Promethean mission. Bury thy woe in the blood-drenched soil of battle. I have found that the fury of war weaves enchantments that soothe even the most troubled heart. Kindred and kind alike. I well know the seduction of warfare. Then thou knowest the joy of cutting a bloody swath through thy foemen. The only joy I felt was in doing the work of heaven as a soldier of God. I have done nothing to warrant this fallen state. How can God allow men to become demons? How can God snatch away the promise of salvation? God allows the innocent child on the battlefield to cry and does nothing. So why should God prevent the misery of a killer like unto thee? I, I do not know. I have not considered these things. Come. I promise thee a trip to the convent, but make haste. Dawn comes quickly. Kristoff? My love? Thou art accursed, if Kristoff be thy love. Nay, do not go, my lord. Let me look upon thee. Good my lord, forgive me. I was filled with fright to behold thee. Thy comely face is now sicklied over with a pale cast, and I scarcely recognized thee. Forgive me. Thou hast been gone so long, we feared for thy life. Thou feared aright, for I am dead to the world, and my soul is lost. Do I behold a ghost? Nay, I touch thy arm, and I know thou art flesh and blood. Not flesh, only blood. My lord, my words do fill my heart with fear, and I tremble. Good my lord, why dost thou look so strangely upon me? My mind is filled with thoughts of such base villainy. My hunger for thee is stronger now than when my heart did pump its own warm blood. I know not what misfortune weighs so heavily upon thy soul, or has driven the rosy warmth from thy cheek. But the heavenly powers can banish all such darkness. Should they banish this darkness, they would banish all that is left of me. Say not so. My lord, I know thy heart, and thy soul is pure. My heart? My soul? Thy words torment me with remembrance of all that I have lost. I was a fool to have come here. I must never return to a house of God. Nay. I pray thee stay. My honored lord, thy soul is in peril. My honored lady, my soul is lost. My cause is doomed, and I am damned. I go. I will not look upon thee again. Then I pray thee, my lord, receive this token of me. Tis but a small amulet of St. Jude. Thou didst give it me. And it hath soothed the pangs of mine own heart that began when first I beheld thee. And a desperate, hopeless love did grow in my breast. Mayhap it will be some consolation to thy doomed cause. Art thou deaf, woman? My cause is lost! Therefore do I offer thee the amulet of Jude, patron saint of lost causes. Oh. Now, sweet heavens, guide him. This is most excellent, Willem. Our alliance with the Cappadocians shall strengthen when I reveal Mercurio's treachery to Garinol. Willem, thou art a Bruja of surpassing splendor. Our grandsire Bruja himself would feel pride at this. In modesty, mistress, I could not have done it without Kristoff's aid. He has done well. Christoph performed admirably, my sire. I believe he is ready to know of the oncoming struggle. What struggle is this? 
the Jihad. The great war of all the vampire clans. The Zemitsi against the Tremere, and us against both. The Tremere? The Tremere were once a house of mages, part of the Order of Hermes. They stole Cain's gift from an ancient of our kind, an antediluvian, one of Cain's grandchildren. They seek to infiltrate and control all the world. They couple the power of Cain with the ways of unspeakable magic. The fiends from the Carpathians, the Zemitsi, are fighting the Tremere even as we speak. The Zemitsi have invaded the ancestral homelands of the Ventru, which puts us in a strange alliance with the very Ventru who destroyed our great city of Carthage. So, we unite with the Vampire Prince of Prague, the Ventru Rudolf Brandl, for now. Thou hast reason to hate the Ventru as well, Christoph. Thou fell in battle against the pagan barbarians because the Ventru made puppets of thy leaders. The Ventru sent thee into battle to stop their Tsimitsi enemies. Most of the barbarians were revenants, ghoul servitors of the Tsimitsi. Other clans maintain havens here in Prague. Thou hast met the Cappadocians. The Nosferatu lurk below the graveyard in the northern quarter. Most of King Otakar's family, the Premisils, are Zemitsi ghouls. With the entrance of the Tremere into Prague, a struggle is bound to ensue, leaving the mortals greatly abused. We must avert this horror. Many in Prague have disappeared, including Bruja. We suspect they fell victim to the Zemitsi fiends or the usurping Tremere. We must stop the abductions. First, we must seek to undo the damage done by the traitorous Mercurio. Mistress, I wish to approach the Jewish quarter and warn the rabbi of Mercurio's meddling. If their golem had suffered a cowardly attack, it may not be able to protect the Jews from the Tsimitsi. We have no alliance with the Kabbalists in the Jewish quarter, and they have powerful charms of faith to wield against our kind. We have a duty to protect the mortals. Should we deliver unto them this news, mayhap the Jews will owe us a boon. But we have much to do first. In three nights' time, thou may deliver thy message. Take Kristoff with thee, but beware. The Kabbalists have no love for the likes of us. Three nights' time may be too late. After one mission with Wilhelm, thou hast become very like him. So be it. Wilhelm, take Kristoff to the Jewish quarter this night, and warn the rabbi. A comely young sister did come to me from the convent. A clever lass she was, and more valorous than many a young warrior. She bade me give thee this letter. My dearest Kristoff, I have spoken to the old gypsy, a woman of great lore and learning. She hath told me much of the way of the Canites. She has heard that the soul is not truly lost after the horrid blood ceremony. There is hope, even in unlife. The elder Canites know of the secret, and thou too may learn of it. I live for thy redemption. Thine in faith, Aneska. Save us! Our own golem has gone mad! Can the rabbi control this brute? Yes, but the rabbi is dead. I am his son, Mendel. Tell me how to kill the golem, Mendel. The golem's life cometh from truth. Thou speakest riddles. The word truth hath been writ upon a scroll and placed within the brow of the creature. The Hebrew word for truth and the word for death are but a single letter apart. Destroy that one letter and the creature falls in death. Most of them. This is the cabalistic magic that quickened the golem. The demon is no more. The golem was no demon. It was, and we have sent it straight to hell. The golem was animated by the life force, and his spirit now returns to Abraham's bosom. What? Blaspheming sorcerer? This monster of clay has no soul. I am no sorcerer. I am a cabalist and all life is from God. 
every man, animal, and creature, even this golem, even vampires such as thee. Liar! They're just toy with my sanity! One such as I cannot be redeemed. I am an outcast from heaven. Not so. All life comes from one place, and to that place it must return. Why should God make such creatures? To vex mankind. They're all part of the kingdom of God, sent to test our faith, as the devil did test the simple faith of Job. How has thy faith endured, Crusader? Not well, for God hath abandoned my soul. The question is not whether God hath abandoned thee, selfish boy. It's whether thou wilt abandon God and become a beast. I shall consider thy words. Nay, there is no magic in the Shem. It is merely letters. Letters which connect the golem to the true source of power. Nonetheless, the Cappadocians would be grateful to get such a thing. It would help them build golems for their own protection. The Shem is thine, with my blessings to do with as thou pleaseth. Hail Garanol of Clan Cappadocian, master of the art of death. Hail to thee, servant of the wise Ekaterina of Clan Brugia. Be most welcome. And hail to thee, good Christoph, who vanquished the fiend in the mines. I make no claim of vengeance against thee for the destruction of my haven. Instead, I offer my thanks to thee and to thy clan for bringing to light the treachery of my venomous child Mercurio. I present this to thee as a gift from Ekaterina the Wise, sire of the Brugia. Ah, yes. This should be of some use. Some use indeed to protect us from the disorder of these times. Tell your mistress I am grateful and owe the noble Bruja a boon. We shall. I only wish this Shen had not been purchased at so dear a price. I mourn the bloodshed in the Jewish quarter by the wicked Mercurio, and do reproach myself for his misdeeds. The good rabbi now journeys into the land of the dead, where hides all knowledge, and I am to blame. Trithi tell Ekaterina, that I wish to serve her Promethean task and strive with her to bind up our uncertain future. In partial payment of the boon I owe, I offer thee my prized child, Serena. She will aid thee in thy efforts. I pray that my service will be of value to thee. I understand thy sorrow, Christoph. When Garanal embraced me, I was forced to leave behind all I loved in the mortal world. The loss of it still weighs upon my heart and drags me to despair. I offer thee any comfort I may give in thy grief. I thank thee, but I do not surrender my hope of reunion with Ineska, even though I am beyond all hope. Then thy Ineska is fortunate indeed, though such barren hope might breed only more sorrow. And he sleeps with the shield. No! I am not surprised the little nun is missing. She is reckless. Dost thou know of her? No! Yes. We shall lie to thee no longer. Anezka came hither in search of thee. The gift of sight blazed in her eyes, revealing unto her that we are Childer of Cain. And yet she had no fear of us. Where is she? We told her thou wert not among us, and she left. What? She insisted on leaving this letter for thee, as if she somehow knew we had lied to her. I give it thee. Dearest Kristoff, I have not seen thee since the night thou fled the convent, and I fear thou hast been swallowed by the creatures that rule the night. But dread shall not rule my heart. I am resolved to renounce my holy orders and walk the face of the earth until I unite with thee. And if thou turneth thy face from me, I shall search for such panacea as will restore thy soul and bring the rose to thy fair cheek again. Thou 
hath captured my heart, and I can do naught but seek thee and make us both whole. Though our cause be lost, yet shall we both be found. Thy immortal love, Anezka. Why didst thou not tell me? Welp, thou must leave her world behind. Thou hast doomed her. I could have persuaded her to stay in the safety of the convent. Nay, thou canst not control such as she. There was a mania that shone in her eye, a kind of madness. And yet her mind was sharp, as if her delirium had strengthened her mind rather than sapped it. In another time, I would have been moved to take such a one as my child. Nay, her soul must remain pure. We must find her and save her from the fiends. We must redeem her before my curse dooms her, as in my dream. The nun was not the only one missing. Many have been taken, mortal and vampire alike. We go in search of our Bruja allies, but we'll rescue as many of the others as we can, including thy mortal nun. Therefore we are resolved to entreat Prince Rudolf Brandel for assistance, even though he is of Clan Ventru. To make amends for withholding this letter from thee, we go tonight. Come. We know of these disappearances. Little happens in Prague without our knowledge. How now? Hast thou discovered the culprit? We can direct thee aright. Should we feel so moved? I cannot imagine such a thing as can move thy lordship. Mm, we desire a reliquary containing the arm of St. George, which lieth in the antechamber of the Cathedral of St. Vitus. Alas, a ring of hallowed ground outside the cathedral doth repel canines. The sanctified ground extends not into the cathedral, but we cannot cross the outer gates. Then how may we cross the sanctified ring to enter the cathedral? We tire of thee. Pray, do not return until thou hast the arm. Very well. We go. Hmm. Piss off the big guy that owns the town and even my buddies. Uh, shut up, bear. If we must. <laughs> 